Good afternoon, everybody. This is Scott McMeans with yet another edition of the Business Spotlight. I am blessed today to be with Tynesha Dice of the Innovative Design Group here in Cleveland, Ohio. And we're going to get a chance to talk about all the highs and lows, the lessons learned, and the special things that make Tynesha and her company so very special to her clients. So with that, Tanisha, do me a favor and please introduce yourself and tell the audience a little bit about you and your business and how you got to where you are right now. Absolutely. That was such a warm introduction. <laughs> so again, I am the owner of the Innovative Design Group. So what we do is website design, uh, course creation, email automation, as well as content creation, email marketing, things of that nature. So basically what I do is I help clients organize their brand strategy. So basically whatever they have existing going on, whether it's a website, social media pages, we'll do an audit and thoroughly analyze what's working, what's not working. And we'll also do some analytical uh, research, for example, some competitor research and really do a deep dive again into what they're wanting to achieve. In terms of how I got here, my background is in sales and marketing, and I actually worked in sales for probably over 15 years, and I was employed at a popular wireless retail company. And the funny thing is that <laughs> some of the, uh, how do I want to say it, some of the business practices that I do da daily, for example, prospecting, following up with prospecting, cold calls, and things of that nature, Although I don't do cold calls regularly, it is something that uh, gave me a nice foundation for owning my own business and, you know, maintaining a good business acumen. I like it. I like it. It's an interesting to me uh, how people that have a sales background find themselves to be successful in business because a lot of the traits and the, the commitment to what you need to do comes from a sales background because you know the cause and effect of your own actions and what that actually reflects in the day-to-day -day work that needs to make a business run. So I give you credit for that. So talk to me a little bit about your business and what separates you from everybody else that I could click and get contact with to help me with my website or my brand, whatever. Why is the Innovative Design Group so different? So what makes me different are a couple of things. First off, if you're working with a larger agency, sometimes you can, as they say, get lost in the sauce. But <laughs> when you're working with my company, it's a one-on-one -on -one approach. We treat you as if you're our only client. So like I said earlier, we're going to do a deep dive into what it is you want to achieve to ensure that you get the online visibility that you're wanting uh, as well. So something that we started doing recently is Google Ads. And I do like doing Google ads because again, depending on what your goals are, that's a way to uh, become more so visible online. And I apologize. What was the second question? No, oh. <laughs> what, what makes you so different? And you've got, uh, I love the phrase, uh, not getting lost in the sauce. That's a one-on-one -on -one approach. What else is it that you do that separates yourself from the other people in the industry? I am very adamant about utilizing a DEI lens, if you will, or even a social justice lens. So in terms of my clients, they're very diverse. And also, too, I work with a lot of women of color. So just in terms of understanding, because I am a woman of color, that's... Um, <laughs> demographic, you know what I mean? Just in terms of marketing, storytelling, uh, telling the narrative and making it come across in, in, a, in an authentic fashion. Would it be safe to say, Tanisha, that because of your, your background in sales and marketing, what you're trying to focus in on with the Innovative Design Group, that you really focus in on um, a demographic targeting, meaning you don't necessarily want to target the wrong audience you're specifically going after an audience that is going to want to engage with the clientele that you have and because of that especially you align the client to the target audience is that is that a fair assessment exactly spot on awesome well i i try i try to i try to connect the dots because that's what that's what makes this stuff work and through that experience and what you've been doing to date how would you explain the success um and i'm not I'm not trying to get behind. Oh, I work really hard because I know you do. My, my 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 intrigue leads me to that is a niche within the market. So how do you approach that very specific niche with a very specific message so those audiences get connected to their clientele? 
Is there something that, that you can speak to that really drives a message home? It's actually, again, two things. One, consistency. And two, again, like I said, doing the one-on-ones with the client, really learning their story. And then, like I said, how to narrate it. And again, looking at what they've done and really assessing what's working and what's not working. Also, too, I have a framework. So it's basically connect, communicate, and then con- what is it? convert. So with that framework, that's how I walk a client through my process. And then we, again, how do you say, get them to the point to where they're comfortable online, whether it be social media, their website, and, um, you know, any online channel, if you will. Okay. Now, when you're, when you're doing this, this connection, this communication, and ultimately the conversion, where is the biggest gap between where a client is and where they want to be? And how is it that you are able to close that so uh, successfully? So again, it's probably two things. Consistency. For example, (laughs) discussing social media or doing email automation. Most individuals come to me because they're at the point where they don't have time to do it and they're ready to outsource. So again, Mm -hmm. so we will assist with creating a message or messages and just again, how do you say, um, I don't want to say facilitating but um, doing that task for them repetitively, but also capturing their brand and their product or service that they're selling. Mm -hmm. Um, In terms of where I really see the gap uh, next to consistency, I would say the communication. Sometimes clients haven't found their ideal audience or who they're talking to. Uh, And often you'll find that uh, clients will be talking to everyone. Whereas if you're in a specific niche, I always uh, recommend talking to someone as if they're your client already, because that assists with the Mm -hmm. conversion. And not only that, again, I can go a little bit deeper just in terms of the sales funnel. You know what I mean? Like awareness, we're warming them up. We're doing different things. So it's, it's a, as I said, a process, but I know you know that. Well, it's interesting because Here's what's so special about business. It's not unique. Every business has to get customers, convince them to buy what they have, find a way to get them to buy more. And eventually you get a profit margin at the end of this whole thing, right? Every business runs very sufficient, very similarly. The nuances that separate business to business is what you've already identified. Your your tagline or your your methodology is um, connect, communicate, convert. That's your process, that's your, that's your philosophy. And your niche is very specific to a demographic that you can get to that you believe you can make a difference in. That alone is winning the battle because you're addressing what needs to be addressed that other people aren't willing to right now from a business perspective. I love the idea that businesses are all very similar, but yet so very different. So tell me some of the most challenging situations you've had knowing that you're trying to not a cookie cutter, because I know it's, it's unique to each customer, right? But you have a cookie cutter approach to getting people into the process. And then internally, the process is customized. What are some of the biggest challenges you face with the people you work with trying to get them from one step to the next? Is that, is that a good question for you? No, oh, absolutely. So first off, and this may sound redundant, but it's addressing their pain points. But mm-hmm. in between that, There needs to be trust. You know what I mean? Someone has to trust me with their brand and their business. Additionally, I would say, um, gosh, I hope I don't lose my my train of thought here um, in terms of mindset. So if you've done Mm -hmm. the same way for so long, granted, it's not working, but are you willing to do what it takes and trust Mm -hmm. change? You know what I mean? So that's 100% what I have a challenge with. And the thing I'll usually do is I'll say, you know what, give me 90 days because marketing is a marathon and not a sprint. And you'll start to see some of these changes, uh, you know what I mean, start to be implemented and you'll see an uptick in your results. Love it. I love it. The whole, the mindset thing is something, uh, Tanisha, that really makes a big uh, glamour spot in my brain because a lot of people are so unwilling to change. And you, you hit on something that's very profound in, in the coaching world, which is you've been in business for 10 years and you are where you are. What do you think the last 10 years is going to teach you moving forward? You have two choices. 
You can either learn from those 10 years of experience and apply it to taking a different approach or continuing to do what you're doing and knowing exactly well, you're not going to make any changes. If you're going to keep doing what you're doing, you're not going to get any bigger, you're not going to get any better, and you're not going to grow. Both your business and the individuals that run the business don't get a chance to grow if you're always stuck. So whatever you've done for 10 years got you to that point. What you need to think about is what changes do I need to make to get to the next point that I really want to get to? And I, I, if I'm hearing you, that sounds like exactly what you were, you were putting together for me. So I, I appreciate that. Let's jump a little bit. You're, do you have people that work on your staff or people that work with you? I work with contractors, not full-time. Okay. So interesting discussion versus somebody that is an employee, but nonetheless important. The relationship you have with the people you work with, how would you best describe your way of working with either a contractor or somebody that is contributing to the work that you do? How do you manage that relationship? It's very collaborative. I am more so, I empower an individual and I love to hear their thoughts. For example, if it's a web design project, you know what I mean? As a web designer myself, you're already thinking through that problem. So if we come across something, we're working on a project, building a website, for example, I work with a gentleman, he'll say, why don't we do this? Absolutely. Because I, you know, trust him and trust them. I know it's going to work smoothly. So again, just really empowering and um, a lot of listening as well. And then perhaps, you know, just kind of figuring out, it's a lot of technicality, managing timelines. And then also too, I'm going on a rant here, you know, like if it's a deliverable that I need from the client. So it's kind of being um, a liaison between all of that, but just being really, like I said, prompt and thorough with my communication. Uh, additionally, in terms of answering the question, just really empowering and listening. Yeah. I, one thing that you've made comment to multiple times now is the word and the concept of communication, the way you communicate with your clients, where you communicate with the people that you work with uh, and the way you communicate a message. I mean, it's one of your three core things, connect, communicate, convert. So you're very heavy on communication. And I think that's one of the things that make you so successful is you're not afraid to have that level of communication that's needed, whether it's good, bad, indifferent, you're putting the information out there so people can react either to what is necessary or proactively go after what you're laying out. So communication is a huge piece for what you do. And I think that that needs to ring in the audience's ear because a lot of people are not very good at communicating. So I appreciate you doing that. When you talk about your approach for the future. What is it that you have in mind for the innovative design group? What is your end goal? I would say my end goal is to probably uh, expand to having a couple full-time employees. I don't, I don't want to get terribly large because we do have, you know, a good workload now, but just constantly, as you said earlier, growing, evolving, learning, because as we know, technology is always changing. Mm -hmm. Um, for an example, I mean, we can say AI, you know, how that affects my work, how, you know, I'm going to mm. utilize it in the future, whereas as to rather how I'm utilizing it now. So I, I think growth, but growth in terms of education and, you know, in terms of individuals as well, like physical bodies, but just growth in terms of education. <laughs> so you want to learn how to do your job better? Not saying that, but just in terms of refining my skills, because like I said, with mm -hmm. technology, of course, we're always going to go circling back, wanting to do our job better, of course. I mean, I'm sure, you know, I could work on doing some things better. But in terms of the education piece, for example, just knowing uh, the latest industry trends, different things like that, different, you know, techniques. And um, that that's something that's very important to me. I love it. The idea that not resting on what you've been doing for how long, but figuring out a way to take those experiences into the next level of growth, development, refinement. I think that's exactly why, again, you're, you're a successful businesswoman. Speaking of success, what would you suggest or, or tell the audience that have been some of your best wins uh, as a business owner? So I would say confidence and just looking at where we've started uh, on a project to where, you know what I mean, they've gotten it and they've grown in, the, grown in their business. Um, I can actually think of a client who they are physical 
or they have a physical kind of a training business, if you will. So when we started, we just revisited um, building their foundation, again, being consistent on the online channels. And then we created a wireframe for them. And then we, you know, laid out a whole uh, online strategy. And from there, they kind of saw growth. But the thing is, I think when you're in something and doing something, you don't always see the progress. But at mm. the you're to yourself, you're saying, oh, I really did this. So. Yeah, it's it's OK. Some of the best wins then would be the fruits of your labor actually are pluckable. You could do something with them, right? Exactly. There's something at the end that actually looks different, new, exciting, and it's effective. I mean, those are great wins. Uh, any opportunity you have to be successful, yeah, take it. That's, that's a good one. I like that. Well, what I, would you say? Go ahead. Sorry. To add to that, I would say it's the transition from the beginning to when we start working together to the end. So, Okay. Very similar, right? They started off as a seedling and now they're a, a beautiful flower, right? Exactly. Now, what would you suggest are some of the biggest challenges you faced as a business owner? You know, I think just like everyone juggling it all, but in terms of networking, you know what I mean? Because now we have the option to network online and offline. But my goal for 2024 is to do more in-person networking because it's really easy for me to stay, you know, behind a computer mm -hmm. all day but I've got to get out there. You know what I mean? Uh, network with a bunch of uh, different individuals and things like that. Because again, when you grow your relationships, then your business will continue to grow as well. I love that. And that's exactly what we should be doing, right? Everybody should be looking to grow their business and you grow your business by talking to more and more people. The more people you talk to, the more interest they have in your business and the more opportunity you have to communicate and convert, right? <laughs> I love it. So as somebody who's been in sales and marketing for a number of years, you have your own business now and you've, you've seen success. If I was a brand new business owner, what would you tell me um, is something I need to know, learn and, and figure out for myself before I get heavy into starting a new business? Make sure that you have all your operational procedures established and make sure to your framework, but initially just make sure you've got all your operational procedures set up your foundation, because again, that's like your house. So. I like that. Like the house foundation, you can't build on it if it's sure. not going to be sturdy. Mm -hmm. I like it. So what is the thing that you like the most about what you do? It's creative. Because when I was younger, I really loved art. I was always drawing. I was always writing. And the thing is, I've been able to translate that into what I love. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Additionally, I do have a love for selling for a while. I got burned out. But I've been able to uh, combine all of the things that I love. I love art. I love contemporary art, uh, music even. You know what I mean? And I feel I just take the inspiration and I'll put that into a website. You know what I mean? I'll put it that'll influence if I'm working on a project or anything or doing a strategy. It's, it's a creative process. It's analytical and creative. So it's just the whole oh. thing. I Okay. I like that. And one thing that you made comment to, and I just want to touch base on it because I think it's important to get a perspective from somebody like yourself. You made comment that you did sales and marketing for a number of years and you got burned out. How do you keep yourself from getting burned out at, the job you have now with the company you're running, how do you, how do you avoid being burned out? Well, I think work-life balance, flexibility in my schedule, 100%. And uh, you know what I mean? I, I have control over it versus someone else because I remember working 10, 12 hour days and it wasn't fun, but just learning from that, just again, being inspired, uh, different things like that, you know, the wellness, all that good stuff. Great. What do you what do you like to do outside of work? Uh, contemporary art. So I do have okay. a an Etsy store. That's one thing I'm working on and walking. You know what I mean? Some physical fit, fitness exercise. Very light though. <laughs> Outstanding. Walking is actually great exercise. Um, last question for you. If you were to go back in time and sit down next to an 18 year old Tanisha, what would you whisper in her ear? Slow down. 
take a look at everything, you know, and weigh everything out. You don't always have to act instantly. It's okay to take your time to make a decision. All right. I like that. Take time to make a decision. Very interesting. Okay. Well, Tanisha, I want to thank you for being on the show. This was great. Um, we had about 20 minutes to talk and we learned a lot about you and we learned a lot about innovative design groups. So thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Is there anything you'd want to say to the group before we say goodbye? If you are uh, interested in any services or anything like that, feel free to check out my website. It's www.theinnovativedesigngroup.com or uh, you can look me up on Instagram. So it is innovative design underscore Klee. Other than that, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, absolutely, Tanisha. And just so everybody knows, all that information, the website, the connected links will be all in the description below. So don't worry about that. I want to make sure as many people get a chance to get connected to you as possible. So we'll have that on there. And thank you so much for your time. It was great learning about you. And I hope everybody got a chance to learn a little bit about how to run a successful business because Tanisha's got it figured out. Thanks. We'll see you all in the next episode.